Approximately 80% of the American population will be afflicted with it at some time in their life. It's just as common as the cold and flu, causing many individuals to seek medical care. Neck and back pain. Most individuals will experience at least one episode of it, and many live with a chronic condition. With over 10 years of clinical experience as a fellowship-trained spine surgeon, Dr. Carmody is on the cutting edge of new technologies and can provide much insight into the realm of spinal disorders. It's important to remember that back pain is simply a symptom of some underlying cause. Sometimes those things are very serious and you need a diagnosis because uh, it can be something as important as infection or tumor. However, most back pain issues are from the degenerative process and have more to do with genetics and lifestyle than, than uh, anything serious and can be treated in a variety of ways. Proper diagnosis is the key. It is generally recommended that patients first seek the advice of their family doctor or a pain management physician. First thing I recommend if you have serious back pain is to see your family doctor. They'll generally be able to tell you what's going on, and if they can't, they can refer you to a good spinal specialist in their area, and they'll know best. And it's important to meet with a reputable spine specialist that possesses fellowship training credentials. I think the most important thing is to find out if your spinal specialist is fellowship trained. What that means is they've undergone specialized training, usually a year or two after their medical residency, and that provides special training uh, for diagnosis and treatment of spinal disorders. It's important to develop a trustful relationship with your doctor. I find if you call the hospital and talk to the nurses where that doctor works, they can give you a lot of insight as to whether or not the doctor is right for you. And since the relationship between a patient and doctor is bound by trust, it is essential that the patient agrees with and is comfortable with their doctor's recommendations. Nobody wants to have spine surgery, but millions of people get it every year because they can't live with the symptoms and they can't get rid of their symptoms in any other way. So if surgery is necessary, patients need to feel very comfortable with their spine surgeon by asking a lot of questions, understanding their problem as, as best they can, and to seek a second opinion if needed. If surgery is deemed the best option, it's important for patients to be educated on the procedure as well as the benefits and potential risks. Spine surgery can really be broken down simply into two categories. One involves taking pressure off of nerves and the other involves stabilizing segments that are either unstable or chronically painful. What we try to do is whatever the problem is, fix it in the way that is the least painful and the fastest recovery time and the most reliable operation to get you where you want to be. My discs, the ones that needed replacement, were worn down. So there was muscle and tissue and bone hitting on places it shouldn't have been hitting on, which would explain all that intense pain that I had. I started training very hard at the gym, and because of some squats and deadlifts, I had injured my lower back. For me to continue to have the lifestyle that I wanted to, being active with my family, you know, doing the, the guy things around the house, um, working out, being on the boat, and all those things, I had to... Uh, get, uh, have surgical procedure done. Back in about, oh, 2005, I started ha really having problems. And I was told by one doctor that I'd have to go ahead and just up my pain medicine and just tolerate the pain for the rest of my life. And that I wasn't really prepared to do. Traditionally, spinal surgery involved large incisions and long recovery times. Over the past decade, some extraordinary advances have emerged, allowing surgeons to obtain the goals of surgery through minimally invasive means. The XLIF is a great new tool available for us to use that allows us to stabilize the spine, decompress, and even correct deformity through a minimally invasive approach. It involves about a one-inch incision directly on the side and uh, can drastically reduce hospitalization stays. Patients who have had surgery using the XLIF technique report experiencing less post-operative pain and a faster recovery time. Patients are frequently able to leave the hospital the day after surgery instead of four or five days, which was more common with the traditional method. The difference I've seen is quite remarkable. It's very important for hospitals to have the latest technology. Patients are much more educated than they used to be, and when they come to us, they've done a tremendous amount of research about what equipment we do have here. When you have better technology, there's certainly a lots in the literature to show that you have much better outcomes, shorter lengths of stay, um, less complications, so that's why technology is important to us. Two weeks later, we did the surgery. If I'd known we were gonna have that kind of result, I would have begged to do it five years ago. I feel like I have my life back. Um, 
getting on my boat, working out six days a week, uh, you know, being able to pick up my child if I want to, um, do everything. It's just, uh, it's very gratifying to know that I, I have my life back. I was very, very satisfied with the surgery. I didn't realize how much pain I was in until it was gone. It's a very promising time for patients with back problems because with new technologies and surgical skills and good judgment, there's a very good possibility that we can improve the quality of life for these patients. As a board-certified, fellowship-trained orthopedic spinal surgeon, Dr. Cameron Noble Carmody possesses an abiding interest in a wide range of spinal disorders, from effective non-operative care to disc replacement surgery and scoliosis corrections. Dr. Carmody and his team of care providers at the Plano Orthopedic Sports Medicine and Spine Center practice alongside other fellowship-trained physicians to provide complete specialty orthopedic care to the community. There's been extraordinary advances in the treatments of all kinds of back problems. Here at our center, we're able to use these new technologies to safely treat patients with less pain and less time off work than ever before. In the case where spinal fusions are required, they are typically performed through a large back incision or through the abdomen, and often both. A new and innovative procedure called an X-lift allows for removal of the painful disc, correction of the deformity, and stabilization of the spine, all through just a small incision on the side. With the X-lift's minimally invasive technique, we can achieve the goals of surgery and keep the patient only in the hospital maybe a day two rather than four or five days, which is typical for a similar procedure. Well, before the surgery, I was taking a lot of pain medicine. I mean, I was taking prescription pain medicine to even just to control it, and it was just becoming very intolerable. And after the surgery, I'm just very happy with the results, and I, I would do it again in a minute. Before I had the surgery on a pain scale of one to 10, I lived between seven and nine. My activities would stop at nine. After the surgery, I can fully live my life to the utmost. I can go to work, I attend my trade shows, I travel 80% of the month, I enjoy my family in ways I never imagined were possible. Baylor Regional Medical Center um, is about three years old. When we built this facility, we put a tremendous amount of investment in technology here. Quality is probably the most important thing to me and to our board. Uh, we actually were recognized by the Institute for Healthcare Improvement this past year as one of 50 facilities in the United States that has um, benchmark great quality. Uh, Dr. Cameron Carmody, who is our chief of surgery here, was involved in that and actually led that team and was responsible for the great work that we did here on that project. My commitment to quality patient care is at the forefront of everything I do. And I'm really excited about the XLIF approach because it allows safe primary and secondary access to the disc space, which is a very good advantage over current techniques. I predict that it will become the preferred technique for both fusions and disc replacements in the future. Dr. Carmody's practice, located at the Plano Orthopedics Sports Medicine and Spine Center, is dedicated to providing a broad range of orthopedic services for back pain. The center also specializes in the treatment of sports injuries of the knee, elbow, and shoulder, foot and ankle problems, hand and wrist surgery, as well as joint replacement, so patients with a variety of injuries can once again enjoy an active quality of life. As Chief of Surgery at Baylor Regional Medical Center at Plano, I play an active role in physician leadership and have a shared commitment with Baylor to become the best hospital system in the region for our patient care and for improved patient outcomes. Dr. Carmody also divides his time between his practice, clinical research on artificial disc replacements, and important, life-changing mission work in Nicaragua. Volunteering my time down in Nicaragua is tremendously fulfilling, both professionally and personally. There's so much need down there. Two weeks a year, we go down and see patients, uh, both neurosurgical and, and orthopedic, and fix children, as well as adults of a variety of spinal, spinal problems. We teach the residents at the Managua Hospital there um, our techniques. We bring down um, the tools we need to help them and uh, have, uh, are starting to build up their hospital to a level that they can actually do some of these more complicated techniques. If you'd like more information about it, we can contact uh, the Scoliosis Research Society at www.srs.org and the health volunteers overseas at uh, www.vousa.org.